In this video, we're going to find the distance a Ferrari travels as it accelerates from rest to 60 miles per hour in a time interval of 3.3 seconds. So the best place to begin is to summarize some of the information contained in this problem. So our initial velocity, the initial velocity of the Ferrari is 0 meters per second. The Ferrari is going to begin from rest, and then it's going to reach a final velocity of 60 miles per hour, and it's going to take a time interval of 3.3 seconds to change the velocity of the car. Now one of the things that we need to know is we want to know what the acceleration of the car is. And remember, acceleration is how fast the velocity of the car changes. Or to think of it mathematically, it's the change in velocity per change in time. Now one of the things that we need to do before we can find the acceleration of this car is we need to have consistent units. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to convert this miles per hour over to meters per second so our units of velocity are consistent. So this should be a good review problem. If our final velocity is 60 miles per hour, what we're going to do is convert this over to units of meters per second. So I know that one mile is exactly equal to 1.61 kilometers, and you should notice that this unit of mile cancels out with this unit of mile, and now I need to go from units of kilometers over to units of meters, so I know that one kilometer, or kilometer, is equal to 1,000 meters, and you should see that this unit of kilometers cancels out with this unit of kilometers, and I'm left with a unit of a meter, and the last step I'm going to do is I'm going to convert units of hours over to units of seconds, so I know that one hour has 3,600 seconds in it. And you should see that this unit of hour cancels out with this unit of hour. And now we get units of meters per second, which in this case works out to be 26.8 meters per second. So what I'd like to do now is use this information, draw a picture of what's going on in this problem. So if this is the Ferrari, and initially the velocity of this car, the initial velocity is 0 meters per second, the car is at rest, this car is going to accelerate in this direction, and we don't know what the acceleration of the car is yet, and the velocity of this car is going to be increasing in the same direction. So remember, whenever the acceleration and velocity vectors point in the same direction, it indicates that the velocity of the object is going to increase. Then what's going to happen is this car is going to reach a final velocity of 26.8 meters per second, and the time it takes to change this car's velocity is going to be 3.3 seconds. And now what we're looking for is we're going to be looking for the distance that this car travels during this 3.3 seconds of time, during the 3.3 seconds that this car accelerates from rest to 26.8 meters per second. And if you notice in the very beginning of this video, we had our coordinate system right here, so we're going to be assuming that this car is going to be accelerating in the positive x direction. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the acceleration of the car by using the change in the velocity divided by the time it takes to change this car's velocity. So in this case, we said the final velocity of the car was 26.8 meters per second, and then we're going to subtract off the initial velocity, which was 0 meters per second. The car began from rest, and the time it took to change this car's velocity, that is to go from 0 meters per second to 26.8 meters per second, was 3.3 seconds. And then when we do 26.8 minus 0 meters per second divided by 3.3 seconds, we get an acceleration of 8.1 meters per second squared. So every single second, the velocity of this car is going to increase by 8.1 meters per second. Now there are two different ways that we can find the distance that this car travels while it's accelerating. We can use this kinematic equation, which says that the distance this object travels equals the initial velocity of the object, in this case the car, times the time over which the car is accelerating, plus one half the acceleration of the car times the time over which the car is accelerating squared. Or we could also use this kinematic equation, which says that the final velocity of the car squared equals the initial velocity of the car squared, plus two times the acceleration of the car, times the distance over which this car is accelerating. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both equations to figure out the distance that this car travels, just so that you see that both methods will yield the exact same result. So I'm going to begin with this equation, this kinematic equation right here. Now I know the initial velocity of this car is 0 meters per second, so this entire term becomes 0. And so what I can do now is I can write the distance that this car travels equals 1 half the acceleration of the car, which we figured out, times the square of the time over which this car is accelerating for. Remember, every single second that this car is accelerating, the distance it travels is increasing. Now in this case, I know the acceleration of the car is 8.1 meters per second squared. Every single second, the velocity of the car is going to increase by 8.1 meters per second. And I know the time over which this car is accelerating is 3.3 seconds, and I need to square the entire term. Now for the purposes of understanding the mathematics behind this, I'm going to do this product out and then find the final answer. So this is going to equal 1 half of 8.1 meters per second squared. And when I square 3.3 seconds, I get 10.8. 89 seconds squared. Now what you should see is that this unit of second squares cancels out with this unit of second squared, and now all I need to do is multiply 1 half times 8.1 meters times 10.89. And when I multiply those terms out, I find that the distance that this car travels while it's accelerating is 44.1 meters, and that's going to be my final answer. Now what I want to do is I want to show that 
using this equation, I will find the exact same result as if I use this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just begin to work right down here. And the equation that I had written was the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity of the car squared plus two times the acceleration times the distance over which this car is going to accelerate. Now the initial velocity of this car is zero. The car begins from rest. And so the final velocity of this car squared equals two times the acceleration of the car times the distance over which this car is accelerating. And remember, we're looking for the distance that this car travels. So what we need to do is we need to solve for delta x, the distance that this car travels. So to do that, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by two times the acceleration. And remember, what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side. And what you should see is that this 2a cancels out with this 2a. And we get an expression for the distance that this car travels equals the final velocity of this car squared divided by two times the acceleration of this car. Now in this case, we said the final velocity of this car was 26.8 meters per second, and we're going to square the entire term. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide by two times the acceleration of this car, which was 8.1 meters per second squared. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to square this entire term out before we divide it by two times the acceleration. And when I do that, 26.8 meters per second squared works out to be 718.24 meters squared per second squared. And then I'm going to divide that by 2 times 8.1 meters per second squared, which works out to be 16.2 meters per second squared. And then when I divide 718.24 meters squared per second squared by 16.2 meters per second squared, I get a value of 44.3 meters. And notice that I'm about two-tenths of a decimal place off, but that result is due more to the significant figures that I was plugging into my calculator. So this is one lesson to be careful with your significant figures. But the important lesson is that either method will yield the exact same result.